ऑल सीट बेल्ट रेडी एवरी वन ओके ओके राइट सो हियर वी स्टार्ट सो द लास्ट क्लास वी स्टॉप एट ए पॉइंट ऑफ न्यूटन फिजिक्स विच वॉज a continuation from galileo that's where we uh, we sort of stopped okay now that was you to understand couple of centuries before in 17th century and that is the time what we call as scientific revolution is the peak of scientific revolution so you remember like we talked about renaissance in europe so renaissance was sort of spearheaded by artists in the first place poets writers they people started thinking beyond the realm of faith and they started keeping humanity in front so human is the most important so that is from where uh, you know lots of uh, new theories started coming in science that is when people started having courage to uh, think beyond whatever they have been taught or understood that's how copernicus story came that's how galileo's story came that's how the uh, earth centric world uh, actually sat gave way to the sun centric world that is from where galileo started doing his experiments that's from where newton expanded his uh, findings and that is where kepler came up with lots of observations and newton capitalized on that so those are the story after the renaissance and then that's uh, after that is what we call as the sort of scientific revolution happens and after that is when the industrial revolution happens that's always it happens like that. you have to have the basic science ready so that technology can be built up on top of it right okay so now uh, to to get to know a bit more about science and technology science and industry science and engineering uh, there is another course which we have called science and engineering by dr najib pudil when it comes you look at it so he gets into the depth of how do you segregate science and engineering what what is the border line and how that takes off in, in global scenario how is it important so he will cover that right okay now uh, there was a peculiar problem which happened in the scientific world after newton this is almost one and a half century after newton actually during newton's time itself that problem was lingering on the air but sort of newton was also failing to recognize it the issue is that as per the theory of gravity which newton has put uh, uh, on the top of the gravity understanding till then every object with the mass should attract every other object with a mass so if you look at the whole celestial figures like it is going beyond solar system you have many stars so all of this should be attracting each other right so we learn that there is a balance which is keeping earth rotating around the sun there is a balance which keeps mars rotating around the sun there is a balance which keeps moon rotating around the earth what if there is a slight tilt in this balance because that can be attracted by other stars also and those stars can be attracted by something else also so there are some position some movement what if this that balance breaks even just a movement of something or a breaking of a star so that balance can break then it can become something like a highway car accident one car goes and hits another one then the common below comes and hits this one this goes and hits something else you know so essentially universe cannot be stable universe can't be stable because everything is attracting everything else. so this balance to move to change you need a minor change to the extent that if sun's mass reduces by a 10 percentage earth will and all other planets will go away from its path now all such things do happen in the celestial space so the uh, the the 
result of this could be that universe cannot be stable he even newton was aware of it actually he refused to look into that he refused to believe or look into his own theory of gravity and the repercussion of that that based on that theory things can come and collide each other at one point if some imbalance is there okay do you are able to get that are you able to visualize that yes sir yes sir okay okay, right. okay. okay. so there are reasons why newton uh, could not because he uh, he was uh, a very ardent uh, uh, faith based person he has written a lot of books on that too uh, in his later part of his life so he he certain sort of believed that no things will be stable like this things will be stable like this. actually it can't be stable like that okay so then after around uh, one one and a half centuries you know what uh, you remember the thing called ether which we talked before anyone my Um, yeah, and uh, Aristotle, uh, Aristotle had put this concept of another form of matter called ether. Like our, we told about panchabhuta. You remember? Air, water, soil, fire, sky, and then ether also. So he brought that concept because you remember the frame of reference which we talked about Galilean relativity. We told if you tell the speed of something, you have to tell in which frame. right so if you tell that the person is moving is so and so uh, kilometer per hour so you will ask where did you see it from from which frame okay or in space let us assume a spaceship comes and tells that we saw we saw a meteor moving in so and so speed but you have to ask the question where were you at that time from where were you not at that Why are we asking that question? Why that question is important? Because uh, when the spaceship was moving, the meteor's sp uh, speed will be less. While the sp uh, spaceship was standing at rest, the speed increased. Exactly, speed. exactly. So the move, the speed of this meteor is also dependent on the speed of the spaceship. And not just the speed, the direction of its movement. You remember, two trains. If you are going parallel in the same direction, what speed you will see is very different from if it is going in the opposite direction, right? If two cars going in same speed, we can play ball. But if a car is going in opposite direction, maybe same speed, you can't do that. So these things are also important. So now you may have heard that uh, speed of light is constant. Right, I I hope all of you have learned in school. Speed of light is constant. Have you? Yes. What does it mean? What does it mean when somebody tells speed of light is constant? Now we are telling speed of something. You can't tell just like that. because it depends on where you are standing which frame then when you tell speed of light the speed of light will be any part of the universe we will observe it will be the same yeah but then if space ship is going like this or like this the speed of light is very far, uh, very very speedy very fast so we can't uh, know the minute things okay anyone else You understand? Like just now we are told there is something called frame of reference. We remember that Elisa walking in the train. If you are standing outside and seeing she is going at some speed, you are in another train which is going in same direction. You feel she is going in some other speed. If you are in another train which is going in opposite direction, you feel Elisa is going in some other speed, right? So we realize that the speed of an object. Cannot be absolute. There is nothing called absolute speed. It depends on from where you are seeing it, what speed you are going, in which direction. And then when you tell speed of light is constant, what does it mean?
we we learned i gave you an assignment of romer finding out the speed of light remember yeah so that was speed of light where from where okay jagdish jagdish yeah tell jagdish So now, sir, Homer found it out from uh, Jupiter's moon. Ah, that is right. But I'm telling speed of light from when you look from where was the question. Okay. So all those things are the speed of light compared to the medium, compared to the medium in space. How light is moving in space, and we were believing that there is a medium called ether. The whole space is filled with ether. that was the understanding till this time 19th century you see this fire uh, this ether fire was lit by aristotle close to 2200 years back so the belief was that the space is filled with ether and compared to ether there is a constant speed for light understand it is just like when you tell what is the speed of sound So can you repeat? What is the speed of sound? Approximate. Very rough. Yeah, I want to see everyone's video. Okay, I I, do, I see you almost all all of you are in black boxes. Okay, all those who have joined now also, Gata, Virat, Nadimya, Sriya, Shashik, Navajit, Navani, Ben, Vinayak, okay, Australia, all of you keep the videos on. It's very tough to take classes. We don't see the faces. That's okay. Yeah. Now you tell me what's the speed of sound? Forty-three meters per second. Ah, okay, something. That is where. That is where. And the other something. Yeah, that is how many meters? Yeah, in the air. In, in water, it will be different. It, it will be different. In another medium, it will be different, right? So when you tell, you will tell in which medium you are talking about. So if you are in air, if you are standing still in a surface, say, then when it moves, what is its speed? So always when you tell the speed of something, you have to tell from where you are talking about. Okay, that is what this relativity which we have learned, the escalator problem, and what I gave is for that. Now, in this case of uh, light. the belief was that speed of light is constant in the medium we are talking the speed in this medium we are telling light is coming normally from sun to us so that is means it is traveling through space most of the distance only for a short distance it is coming through earth atmosphere that means it is predominantly traveling through space and space is filled with ether so in ether its speed is so and so was the understanding okay but then there are lots of questions coming If there is ether in space, and that is the space in which all these planets are moving, stars and certain things are moving, won't there be friction? Won't ether heat up? All these questions were coming. So the detective presence of ether became a very important thing in the 18th and 19th century in science. So these two gentlemen, Michelson and Morley, very very talented, important. Uh, Uh, experimental scientists who had also won Nobel Prize. They were uh, very important for their experiment. So, you know what is experimental scientist? When we tell experimental scientist, yes, a person who uh, applies the physics in exactly. uh, Correct. experiment. Correct. So there is theoretical science. There is experimental science. Theoretical science they come applied up with, physics. Yeah, they they come up with 
the theories and now you have to prove this theory or you have to test it. you have to make a test for uh, proving this right and such a test could be very very difficult like this particle experiment particle acceleration and all are tests actually so there are yeah in large hadron colliders exactly exactly large hadron collider and all are experiments so the people who work there are experimental scientists and there are theoretical scientists theoretical scientists like newton galileo and all are there putting theories but then galileo from him onwards they started doing experiments on their own also so they do basic experiment but these are big experimental setups so this michelson and morley they conducted an experiment which you can see that their device in the system is to is to uh, detect the presence of ether so what they did they measured the speed of light along the direction like our train experiment let us assume light is coming like this light is coming from this like this okay like our elisa going in train like this so they traveled along with the light and measured the speed of light and then they traveled in a direction uh, opposite it, not exactly opposite uh, different from it just like our train experiment you remember elisa is going in one train you are going along with her okay and then you are going opposite to her or perpendicular in a different direction so there will be a difference in speed right so if elisa's train was going at 50 km per hour if your train is going 50 km per hour you will observe elisa is walking in some speed and if you are going opposite the measured speed or observed speed will be different right that is what we have learned in the relativity galileo relativity class so same way they observe the speed of light what going along with it then going actually perpendicular but you consider opposite and they calculated the difference between these two things okay so that was their experimental setup now when they calculated that difference the difference they got was zero the difference in speed of light it is just like we going along with the elisa in the train we observe one speed now our train is going opposite so actually we should feel elisa is going fast so there should be a difference in speed between this direction and this direction but then in the case of light Michelson and Morley when they conducted that experiment they got the difference as zero which means there is no difference in the speed of light when you measure along with it or in a different direction so obviously they thought their experiment is wrong they thought the experimental setup is wrong because light speed is very fast like what i was just mentioned how to calculate so after them so many people conducted this experiment again and again every time they conducted with more precision equipments instruments they got this difference as zero this shook the scientific world which means whatever theory if this is true if this is true whatever theory of galilean relativity and all those things whatever we learned is wrong we just now we were learning that uh, you can't tell something called absolute speed it depends on how you are moving what speed you are moving in which direction and here when you observe the speed of light in any direction it is coming the same so then in so many people in the scientific world they started running behind this how to measure how to measure this and all the experiments they get the same result which is what they call as the famous null null is null null means null means zero nothing so this experiment is called the famous null result because they were expecting a difference in speed but what they got is zero so that is called the famous zero or famous null so then many people came up with many theories to explain this one of such theories was i don't know whether you heard about certain scientist called fitzgerald and lorentz and all they are very famous scientists so they came up with a theory that bit difficult to fathom bit difficult to comprehend when something is moving its length may change still now we are telling 
if ayati's height is 4 feet ayati is 4 feet in mumbai in uh, uganda in america in moon wherever she goes she is 4 feet high but now these people told no when she moves at very high speeds her length can change that means length of objects can change that is called contraction this is one such theories proposed by Fitzgerald and Lawrence and they came up with equations they came up with equations very famous equation called Lawrence equation which is normally uh, a subject in masters but they couldn't fully explain this phenomenon so that is the time a very young clerk in an embassy I think very young means 25 26 year old clerk he presented a paper he presented a paper in a science journal, uh, I think in a conference of science journal. And he presented that actually this experiment which they conducted is right. The result which they got is right. The reason is, he told speed of light is constant, irrespective of which frame you are seeing it from. Speed of light is constant irrespective of which frame you are looking at from. That is a property only applicable to light. For everything else, whatever you said, Galilean relativity matters. But for light, it doesn't matter. For light, wherever you look, Whichever direction you travel, whichever you speed you travel, if you measure the speed of light, it is constant. That was the theory which Einstein, this young person, put forward. He was not a scientist at that time. He was not into that circuit. He was a clerk in an embassy. So if you want to really understand the, uh, the repercussions of it, uh, you see, Look at this top case, don't look at bottom case. Look at this top case. A train robbery is happening. Okay? So, our Vinayak, our Vinayak, Stark industry, okay, he's done a bad bank robbery. Okay? Going in a train. No, sir, I don't bring Bank robbery, robbery, big amount, uh, big amount. Huge amount, millions. You want to join? Okay, or I am I am going. I did a robbery and I am going. Yeah. Now in flight Phillips, I am going on top of train. Right? Now there are two policemen. A and B. Okay. Alan and Alfie. Brother police. Now they are shooting me. They are shooting me. Now this train is going at 50 km per hour. Now somehow Alan jumped onto this train and he is also on the train. I am also on the train. But Alfin is standing on a tower outside. He is not on the train. He is shooting. Alan is shooting. Alfin is shooting. And I am just running on the top of the train. Now the, the bullet which from Alfin's revolver and both revolvers are coming at 100 miles per hour. Now train is going at 50 miles per hour. I will get shot for sure from both of them. What would be the speed of the bullet for me from Alvin's revolver? At what speed it will hit me? I am on top of the train which is going at 50 miles per hour. Alvin is on the top of the train and uh, Alfin, uh, Alan is on top of the train, Alfin is standing outside, both are shooting me. They are not thinking that I taught them science and all, they told if it is robbery we will shoot. So I am getting shot. But what will be the speed of the bullet from Alan and Alfin, which I will experience? 100 miles per hour. A or and B will be 50 
my ah brain. okay brilliant are you able to understand this you see she is telling shivananda is telling from alan's bullet will hit me hard 100 mile per hour now alfred's bullet will hit me at 50 miles per hour why do you understand Shivananda, can you yeah. ex explain it to them? Uh, because he is standing still and he is not moving while the robber is moving at a speed of 50 km per hour with the train. Yeah. Mega, you are telling something. Yeah. No, sir. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, like uh, Rishikesh also mentioned. See, this train, this robber, between this robber, that is me, between me and Alan, Actually, there is no difference in speed because we both of us are on train. So we can play ball. So his 100 miles per hour is 100 only for me. But for this guy's 100, he has to first cover the speed of 50 of the train. So I will feel only 50. Right? Okay. So I have to hope that this Alan is a poor shooter. Otherwise, I am in trouble. Okay. So now assume the second case, relativistic robbery. Assume both of them are shooting with light. Okay, this is not bullet which is coming, light what is coming. Now when that happens, for me, from both of them, the speed of this light which I experience will be same. Whatever you are studying, 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. You understand and this is this phenomenon is only applicable to light that is something people were not knowing till then that is what this person called Einstein explained which is what we call a theory of special relativity why it is special relativity because we already studied one relativity Galilean relativity yeah so that is why this is called special relativity. Are you able to understand? First of all, all of you please switch on your video, sir. If I don't see your face, I don't I won't be able to make up. All of you please switch on your videos. Let me just see. Lots of them I see black box. I don't even see. Okay, at least if I see your face, I can get an idea. Okay, whether how sad you are. Okay. Okay. Tell me. Are you able to get this? Are you able to get an idea of this? Very rough idea? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Others? Are you getting an Ananya? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Gata and all, Ashik. Are you getting some idea? Shreya? Okay. Very rough, okay. Very rough, very rough idea. Even if you don't get it full, very rough idea. Okay. Now, now things will get complicated. So one, he postulated that there is an assumption which we are giving to light from the normal theory of relativity. Light follows special theory of relativity. And its speed is constant irrespective of which frame you are what speed you are going. Now the trouble starts here. How is it possible? What is light? When you tell, what was the most horrendous thing which you saw in the last one month? Most horrific thing which you saw in the last one month? What is the most horrific thing which you saw in the last one month? Apart from this class. Oh, you didn't see anything horrific. Okay, let me reframe. What is the most pleasant thing you saw in the last one? Tote, uh, Rishikesh told. Yeah, Elsa, yeah, Elsa. 
Rain thunderstorm. Rain thunderstorm. Okay. Now, when Elisa is seeing, she is telling, she is a thunderstorm or she is a rain. Or Rishikesh tells, she is a touting. What does it mean when you tell you saw something? What is actually happening? How are you seeing something? The light is light. The light is reaching the light. Yes. So light from that object reaches your eye. Right? Yeah. So what are we telling? So we are now slowly entering philosophy. Okay? So when you tell you are seeing something. So let us assume Elisa is telling, you know that thunder lightning happened. I was sitting in that, standing in that back balcony. What does that mean? That means the time when light from that thunder reached that balcony, that time Elisa was standing in that balcony. That is what it means, right? Is it not? Yes. Yeah. So that also means when you tell you are seeing an event. So Elisa is telling, what is she telling? Evening, 8.30, I was standing outside my balcony. I saw, I saw light. So her concept of evening 8.30, that event happened. How that event happened? Event didn't happen then. Light from that event reached her eyes then. What if that time a supernova happens at a place 100 light years away? When she was standing in balcony at 8.30, when Elisa was standing, 100 light years away, a supernova happens. That even happened when she was standing in balcony. Did she see it? No, oh, so she can't. She won't see it. No. no. She'll she see it only on hundred days. She won't see it. So when she says, when she says, when you tell, when I was walking through that road, I saw so and so thing happening. That doesn't mean that you and that event. You and that event were at, were at the same time. That doesn't mean. So this is known as time dilation, right? Yeah, it is. Mm, or it is a concept of time dilation you can take. So, what does it mean when you tell your idea of time? Elisa's idea of eight thirty, or Elisa's idea of time. Your time when you tell is based on events which you see what you see and view but what you see is depending on the light reaching your eyes what if let us assume elisa's sister is staying uh, in another planet which is only 50 light years away from that supernova elisa is standing in earth 100 light years away from supernova. Elisa's sister is staying in another place which is 50 light years away from supernova. Who will see this supernova first? My sister. Sister will yeah. see. So sister will call Elisa. Elisa, you know what happens when I'm standing outside this supernova is happening. Elisa is telling, don't bluff. I am also standing outside. Jagada. Dushman, Dushman. Right? So, actually speaking, both are right. Both are right. What is the difference? Distance. The time. Yeah. Distance is the difference. Distance is the difference. And her time and Elisa's time are two different things. Right? Her time and Elisa's time are two different things. Is it not? It is like, it is like uh, the, the cricket match, World Cup cricket is being broadcasted. It is happening in Muscat and Ritish is seeing in the TV. 
But now, um, now Ben is also seeing the TV from Kerala. But the, the broadcast of Ben is coming five minutes delayed. Because Ritish is standing, he is in the he is in that uh, place where it is happening. So from the ground he is seeing. Ben is seeing in the TV. But it is coming five minutes delayed. Right? So Ritish will call and tell that, you know what? Uh, in the last ball we there was a wicket gone. Ben will tell no no no, he's still batting. Right? It is like that. So same event. But both are leaving in two different times. So the concept called time is relative. It is depending on which part of the space you are. You understand? It is depending on which part of space you are. So, when so, you uh, tell, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if we look, uh, uh, if the if if it's uh, uh, ten kilometers away from the stadium, yeah, and that, uh, 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 it's a uh, it's a just a particular uh, distance, uh, and looking through a, a, a powerful uh, by by binoculars, you could see the uh, see the uh, event. So yeah, the, the, then is there any could, time difference? No, there is no time difference. Even okay. even that it, even the television uh, which you are being broadcasted, if it is current, then also there could be maybe very few second time difference, right? Because why? Why the speed of light, the speed of light is three into ten raised to five kilometer per second. So ten kilometer is nothing in front of it. But if you are, if you are standing at a place which is one light, yeah, it's like uh, uh, in one second light can travel uh, seven times around us. Yeah, exactly. So if you are standing in another place which is one light year away, how much of our binocular you see, you will see it after one year, right? Yeah. So that is yes, I understood. Yeah. So that is the concept we tell called space time. Okay, so uh, now the repercussion of what we told before, if we are telling the speed of light is constant in whichever direction you are observing and measuring it, what is speed? Speed is distance by time. Okay, now we realize like in the case of train, if you are moving like this, obviously, if you are going in opposite direction, there has to be a change in speed. If that is not happening for light, which is what we use to see something, which means if speed is constant, then the other two, distance and time, which is what constitutes the speed, have to change. Then only speed can be constant. So either Distance has to change or time has to change. Now, Einstein's proposition is that both these changes, which means what? Which means if Mecca and Ritish are seeing cricket and Mecca is telling one hour we are sitting in the stadium, but Ritish is going in a spaceship very fast around the stadium. After one hour, he comes for a tea, sitting with Mega. Mega told us one hour since the time cricket started. With he tells, no, in my clock, it's only five minutes. See, it is very difficult for us to comprehend. But that is a repercussion of the special relativity, that time is not constant for all the people. It is depending on the speed in which you travel. If you travel with higher speeds, you are time measured and the time for somebody else can be different. Now, that is actually explained through a very famous thought experiment called twin paradox. So the twin paradox, don't take it in literal value just to get you an idea. It's a very famous thought experiment. The idea is that now, Alan and Alfin, same brothers, okay? Now, the brothers are maybe 
uh, what is your age difference? Let us assume both of them are of same age. Both of them are of same age. Okay. Now both of them are same age. We are packing alfin in a spaceship. Inside it. Okay. Alan says too much of trouble with him fighting with me each time. He packs alfin and spends in a spaceship which goes very fast. Right? And then Alan happily leaves. Happily leaves, marries, have kids and kids, kids and he becomes a grandfather. That is after some 30, 40 years. Uh, Alan is some 60 year age and that is the time our Alfin is coming back from the spaceship. He's only 25 years. When they left both were 20 years, Alan is becoming grandfather and when he sees Alfin coming, chaka chak and coming and meeting him. At this time, Alan realized I should have gone in spaceship. Thank you. What does that mean? If you travel at high, very high speed, much closer to light, your time could be much different from the time of someone else who is having a speed difference. This is only for a very, very vague understanding. Don't go literally with it. But then, Depending on where you are, even at different parts of the space, like we saw before, your time is a factor of which part of the space you are. Because when you tell time, that means what events you are seeing. So now your time is what all of you are sitting in, in, in this science class. And if somebody comes and asks all of you, all of you tell we are in science class, we are sitting. Suppose somebody is seeing it in a Facebook live, if there's a time delay, they will be seeing you know, after some time. Suppose in some other planet, somebody is sitting and seeing after half uh, light year away, they will be seeing after half a year. So for them now, they are doing something else. So this what we call as now, then, time, and are very, very, very relative. And it can also vary with the speed at which you travel. Okay, and then uh, it is not just the uh, the time; it is also the distances can undergo change if you travel very fast. Let us not get into that part. So now, what did Einstein do? He broke the fundamental science, which was based on the theory that length, time, and everything is constant, but then your speed is varying. And he broke that and told speed of light is constant. And then your time and distance and anything can vary. And he told one more thing. The thing called mass, what we call as mass, it is the ideal mass. So when we tell last class somebody told 42 kg, 60 kg, it's your ideal mass. Ideal mass means in normal earth uh, or in the moon where you are going in normal speeds. If you start traveling at very high speeds, something called relativistic mass will come into picture. If you start traveling at higher speeds, your relativistic mass will increase. And when your mass increases, your inertia will increase, which means we have learned force is mass into acceleration. So if some object's mass increases, you need to apply more force. So more force it, means more energy. More energy, yeah. So the more speed you travel, your mass, relativistic mass increases, the more force you have to apply. And when your speed gets very closer to light, your relativistic mass becomes close to infinity and you need infinite energy, infinite force to move it. That is why the theory that nothing can travel faster than light. Nothing can travel faster than light. Sir, but uh, but uh, some scientists say it is wrong. Huh. That uh, Albert, yes, yes, there is proven theories. <laughs> not fluent theory. Literally, nothing, sir. It said that nothing can uh, travel faster than. 
space means uh, it's nothing uh, it's, uh, as it says in what a warp drive can it's uh, theor theoretically proven uh, uh, the, today's science is depending on two theories basically one is quantum mechanics second is relativity okay so there are many people who propose many things but the day this is proven that something can travel faster than light today's science will collapse you need to build new theories okay so don't tell it is proven uh, what one thing something which has happened very close to this was i think some seven or eight years back in the collider experiment in the particle experiment they detected one particle which is traveling faster than light and i still remember the headlines of newspapers the next day by telling are we seeing are we witnessing a collapse of current science but then they redid that experiment and then they realized that no, it was a, there was a minor calculation difference, just slightly lower than the speed of light. So uh, there could be many theories, but the proof as of today, the current science is nothing can travel more than There is no scientifically validated proven theories that can travel more than Okay. Yeah. Rishikesh, after the class, I'll explain again. Okay, so uh, the reason why we tell some, nothing can travel faster than light is because of this, of relativistic mass. Okay, and then Einstein didn't stop there. He came up with one more concept. The concept was that we have told, you remember the last class we told the universe is formed with two things. What were that? Two important things. Matter. Yes. Force. force. And force, yeah. Force means unit energy, like Ben was telling, to apply force. There are only two things, matter and force. You can take it as energy and matter. The whole universe is built. So after the universe is built, no tinkering has happened. That's what we learned last class. No tinkering means there is no force. There is no external interference which increase the matter in the universe or decrease the matter or energy. Okay. So that means whatever you do play around within the universe, you can only change the shape and form of it. So that is what we have learned that theory of conservation of mass and conservation of energy. Newton built a bridge between these two. He told mass can be converted into energy. Energy can be converted into mass. And he brought an equation for it. The equation, I hope all of you know, that is maybe the most famous scientific equation ever. Right? Some of you told even before the class started. What is the relationship between mass and energy? E is equal to mc Yes, E is equal to mc square. So, what is that C? Uh, yeah. You told Newton, not Einstein, no. I'm sorry, Einstein. I'm sorry. I thought when you I thought... Actually, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Einstein, Einstein. <laughs> Einstein. Okay. We're talking about Einstein, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the E is equal to mc square. M is mass of the object. Or which mass you are talking about. You know what is C in that? Speed of light. The speed of light. The square of speed of light. Speed of light itself is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. You see square of it. 9 into 10 raised to 16 it is. You see, if you have 1 gram of mass, that can produce energy equivalent to 1 gram into C square. So, that is what happens in sun. When hydrogen ions collide and form helium, there is a minute difference in mass of the two hydrogen ions and the helium what is formed. There is a minute difference in mass. And that mass becomes energy. That is the energy in which we are surviving. The equation Rishikesh is E is equal to mc square. Somebody please write in, in chat. 
E is equal to m c square. This is the equation. m c square means m into c into c. That is the equation. Okay. Actually, that is an approximate equation. That equation uh, has one more component, but you understand it is easier than c square. Okay. So now c is speed of light. Rishikesh. C is speed of light. E is equal to m c square. M is the mass which is getting converted into energy. C is uh, m c square. E is equal to m c square. M into c into c. So that a minute gram of matter can produce so much of energy. Even when you see E is the energy. Rishikesh. E is the energy which you can get from one gram of matter or one mass of matter. So, if you have a small mass of matter, that mass into c square, square of speed of light, is the energy which you have theoretically you can make. Okay. So that is why we tell like nuclear bomb and all. In when you tell about fusion, can create so much of energy. That is actually from here. Mass to energy and energy to mass equivalent. That is why we consider Einstein as one of the greatest scientists ever. Okay. Now, I know some of these things will be a bit dicey. That's why starting itself, I've told uh, the kidney may get catch fire, smoke may come out. Okay, be careful, have your seat belt. Whatever you understand, you understand. If you don't understand some part of it, also it is okay, right? Okay. Now you see, we are getting into uh, another part. This is this one theory called special relativity. But then, this theory is a problem. Uh, I am skipping this part. Uh, this is a bit complicated for you. Uh, I will just tell that you know he introduced it. Thing called space time. So we the whole uh, events in space we normally represent with something called space time. I'm not getting into this. Uh, the concept is like you have space which is three dimensional. Uh, any space is three D, right? You have height and width and uh, whatever you call it thickness. So there are three dimensional. Three D only you can see some. That is called three dimensional view. But then he brought by telling there is something called time, which like we told, Elisa is seeing something here, her cousin is in another another place. So her time is different. So time is a function of which part of the space you are. So we draw something called space time diagram that is beyond the scope of you all. I normally do it when 11, 12 gets come. So we will come to that. But uh, there is a uh, there is a complexity which this theory of relativity which is brought up. Complexity is that what are we telling about uh, gravity? We are telling sun is here, earth is here. If there is a change in mass of sun, the gravitational attraction between earth and sun will change. Or if there is a change in sun or earth's mass. Or if there's a change in the distance between both, the gravitational attraction can change. We are telling if some there is a collision happens and some mass goes away, Earth can escape. And that force acts instantaneously. That is the theory of gravity. But then here we are telling nothing can travel faster than light. So how does Earth get to know? that some mass is gone from the sun. Who passes this message? You understand the problem? When we tell between two objects, there is something called gravitational attraction. We are telling if the mass of the other object changes also, the gravitational attraction will change. So now the question is, if, if there is a change in say sun's mass, how does Earth get to know instantaneously? Sir, it's orbit. It is? What is this? Sir, if there is a change in the gravitational force of Sun, then there might be a change in the orbit of the Earth. Yeah, but who, who 
brings the signal. How does Earth gets to know? Earth and Sun are not living beings, right? They are not seeing each other. Sir, light, uh, light reaches uh, in more time. The light takes eight minutes. It takes right from uh, if the ma if the gravitational forces increase uh, any difference in uh, the time to reach uh, light. Yeah, but the gravitational force, by the very definition, if if it is coming with light, that means the uh, the change in sun uh, will get felt. The gravitational force will be felt on Earth after eight minutes. That is not true. As per the gravitational force definition, it has to change instantaneously. Let us assume uh, two uh, black holes which are one light year away. The force between them will change if one black hole collides with something else instantaneously. It can't wait for the light to reach in one year. So this was the puzzle. Because uh, if you tell us if something uh, can travel instantaneously, yeah, but the orbit to change, <laughs> the light has to reach, right? So if the fastest thing on on this universe is light. How can something else travel faster than light? So Newton, uh, sorry, Einstein spent quite a lot of time to break this puzzle. So it seems around 10 years he spent on this to explain this. He brought many theories, many theories to explain this. He struggled and finally he came up with this theory of general relativity, which is supposed to be a path breaking theory. So, this again a bit puzzling. The theory of general relativity says gravity is not a force like what we studied till now. He says gravity means if there is a massive object, say this is sun. Previously we told there is something called space time. Space is three dimensional, then there is time. So this, that means there is a four dimensions, space and time including that is called space time, four dimension, very difficult for us to visualize. But then if we tell something is happening in the universe, we have to think which space, which part of the space it is and then what time it happened. So okay. is it bending of space time? Yeah, so this is the general relativity says that, uh, so let us assume you are in Mars now. One of you, Ritish is in Mars now. He's gone to his friendship. He's in Mars. Okay. Now, uh, Sivananda has taken a spaceship and he has gone other direction and she is in some other galaxy. What R Sivananda sees and what Ritish sees are two different things. They are in the same universe. They are separated not just by space. Their time itself is different. The concept of Shivananda's time is based on what she sees. Your time is what you see. And his time is very different. So that is why the whole universe, when you analyze, you tell, you have to tell in which part of the space and at what time. So that is called space time. So this space time is four dimensional. It's very difficult to comprehend. Don't break your head. But we call it the space time fabric. So his theory was that when there is a heavy object, it is just like you assume you have a fabric or a cloth or a net or something. What will happen if you put a heavy object? So that will just sink, right? It will slightly sink. It won't fall down because you just assume it is like a circus ring. You have like the other day you told in circus, you keep this net. When somebody falls, they will just slightly that net will fall down. So the space time, if you just as a visualization, if you visualize, when there are massive objects, not you and me, it can slightly bend the space time fabric. It can bend. So sun can bend the space time fabric. So if you are here, you will slide. If Earth you can bend space time fabric, if there's a stone on Earth atmosphere, stone is coming to you, falling to you, not because a force are placed between these two, because of this bend which is created by the Earth, a stone is falling down. So his theory was that gravity 
is an effect of this bending of space time if you try to understand intelligently what did he do what he did is till now we told a stone if assume this is earth that stone is falling onto earth if a stone is dropped from atmosphere because earth attracts it then the question will come if earth is to attract some signal has to come from earth to the stone that was creating the problem for him because then between earth and something very far away that signal cannot travel faster than light so he changed he changed that problem in a way that the stone is falling not because something comes from earth but because something happens where stone is sitting that is getting bent that is why it is falling so this will look like a fiction but then this was his proposal he told one more thing with that we will stop he told when there is a major change like this now this is stable earth is stable let us assume another very big massive object comes and hits earth and this goes and hits that that means some big change in the space time then there could be turbulence right this way you know let's assume this is rolling if this is rolling what will happen there could be turbulence so if there is something like a huge black hole or a huge galaxy or something goes for a major change there can be turbulence in space change that turbulence will travel throughout the space time as something called gravitational wave and you can detect it it was einstein predicted that which was detected i think 2 years back 3 years back so that was the hypothesis the general relativity hypothesis almost a century back and we got theoretical proof there are other theoretical proofs but this is solely theoretical proof of physically observing i will put uh, some videos in in the in the session after this uh, there are talk shows which showed like how that uh, how that is observed pretty recently it's called gravitational wave so now we have the so called gravitational wave observatories to observe gravitation so that are like when there is this tilt like this gravitational wave just now we observed was because two black holes actually merged together that's a huge event heavy mass event so that was the turbulence of earth so his theories which many people had tough time to understand and had doubts slowly got evidences and got proven that is why we consider general relativity as both relativities as one of the foundation of today's science now this is what is used to explain large things in the universe for example something like when we tell the orbit of many planets we are able to exactly predict the orbit of planets using newton's gravitational equation but then there are certain orbits which change by a bit when you apply the relativity equations which slightly modifies that part we are able to we able to uh, predict it with even the minute accuracy things like gps global positioning system which exactly tells a specific point this actually originally developed for a military application like you are going in a car you can tell which position you share your location and all right it is based on gps so that is actually you need very precise location accurate calculation and you need to apply relativistic equations to get that so today's our understanding of the space and universe is based on relativistic theory the next class we will talk about how all these large phenomena are happening if all these things to happen when you tell universe is made of only matter and force how are these things happening that is based on very small things happening inside an atom and that world is very different from this world we are talking about space and how these big things happening how this gravitational waves happening now how are all these things happening that is because of things which happens inside an atom and that is what we call as quantum mechanics the science which talks about that what we call as 
quantum mechanics, which is contribution by many scientists. And these are the two new theories, uh, which evolved in the 19th and 20th century, which defines today's science. Unfortunately, these two theories don't see eye to eye. Okay, so one of the biggest challenge of science today is how do we merge these two theories? How do we merge relativity with quantum theory? And that is yeah, that is a major major area of today's science. So in the next class tomorrow, we will come to uh, some more part of the space. Then we will come to quantum mechanics. Okay. Now you can ask questions.